So let's start with the low-hanging fruit here. We all know that the evil god monster brags about killing all the creatures of the world in the story of Noah. I could stop there and argue that point if you like. We could once again talk about the innocent babies and kittens, puppies, elderly, infirm, sinful, and innocent alike who didn't just die but were horrifyingly drowned in a flood. Oh sure, the text tells us that all the people of the earth had wickedness in their heart, but really, every child had wickedness in its heart? Murder all the animals because the people have wickedness in their heart? See, this god monster brags about doing such things. So, slam dunk for me. These episodes practically write themselves. But wait, there's more. More, you say? Well, yes, there are many forms of harm. In an earlier chapter, I mentioned how the authors of the Bible tend to waste precious time and page space on nonsense when they could have used it for more moral lessons. Things like not to rape people, not to take young girls as sex slaves, not to talk in the theater, and not to put pineapple on pizza for God's sake. You know, modern notions of morality. And here, once again, we see a wasted opportunity. Lots of wasted opportunities. Genesis 7 verses 2 and 3 say, Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kinds of bird, male and female, to keep their various kind alive throughout the earth. Then it says in verse 4, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. Then it says Noah did as commanded, so we can presume all the animals are on the boat. Then it tells us how old Noah is. Then in verse 8 and 9 it tells us again about the animals as they enter the ark. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and all of the creatures that move along the ground, male and female came to Noah and entered the ark, as God had commanded. Verse 11, again, points out Noah's age, this time down to the day, to indicate when the flood started, because that's powerfully important information. Then in verse 12, it again says, rain fell for how long? How long did it fall for? 40 days and 40 nights, echoing verse 4. Verses 14 and 16, again, tell us about all the animals. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kind, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing. Well, wait. Didn't it just say that in verse 8 and 9? Deja vu, huh? Verse 17 needs to remind us once again that the flood continued for how long? 40 days. And then verse 17, 18, and 19, and 20 all say the same thing over and over again, just in different ways with subtle little differences. 17. For 40 days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. Verse 18. The water rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. Verse 19, they rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. Verse 20, the waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. You see where I'm going with this? Then verse 21 through 23 does the same thing, repeats the same idea over and over again. Verse 21, every living thing that moved on the land perished, birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. Verse 22, everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Verse 23, every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Is that not a massive waste of time? You can argue that there are subtle differences, and there are, but come on. Just one of those lines could have said something like, After the flood, Noah and his family learned it was important to boil their water before they drank it, or they could get sick and die. But no, just more crazy talk. Let's not toss actual useful information in there. Is there some kind of hidden secret meaning buried within the text? If so, it's useless trash to most of the billions of people who've read it and not picked up that meaning. Would looking at the original text yield a clearer meaning and a better message? If it does, again, it's useless trash since most people will never experience that version. If the Bible were the word of a perfect God, it would be perfectly clear to anyone, regardless of language or century, and we'd all believe. This god of death so fetishes its own murderous ways, it chooses to echo them over and over again here at the end of the chapter, instead of providing actual, useful information. Exactly the kind of thing you'd expect from the evil god monster of Abraham in his book of death. So what do you think? Apologist, how do you defend the actions of this creature? Let me know in the comments below. 